Good morning, everyone. I pray and hope today that you will know that the Father loves you and that you will experience His peace and His truth in your life today. Why? Because He, one, is the God of truth and is the God of peace. And so I pray that He will speak those things into your life today. In fact, our psalmist today, in Psalm 12, has a problem. He is surrounded by treachery. He is surrounded by half-truths. Or as we have learned to say in the last year and a half, or four years rather, that it is fake news. And so we have been taught, or conditioned rather, to not trust our norms, to not trust the things that we are know that we know and stand on as truth. And so the psalmist in Psalm 12 says, God help me, because there's a problem here. Here's what he says in Psalm 12. Help, Lord. The godly man ceases to be, for the faithful disappear among ordinary men. They speak falsehoods to one another. With flattering lips and double heart they speak. Lord, cut off all the flattering lips, the tongue that speaks great things. Those who have said, with our tongue we will prevail, and our lips are our own. Who is God over us? Then he says this, because of the devastation of the afflicted, because of the groaning of the needy, now I will arise, says the Lord. I will set him safely for that which he longs. The words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in a fire seven times. You, Lord, will keep them. You will preserve this generation forever. The wicked may strut about on every side. Even evilness is exalted amongst the sons of men. But you, Lord, will prevail. Wow. How he speaks to the things that we hear around us. Because what do I believe? What do I trust? How, what do I do here? We feel like all the righteous folk have disappeared. Several years ago, I was quite incensed. I was really, really angry. Because a prominent Christian college put in their alumni magazine that the church in San Francisco was dead and there were virtually no Christians there. All of us are going, what are you talking about? We're here. We're serving at the gates of hell. But in their minds, all the righteous people were gone because of the things that they saw. Well, it's the same thing we feel sometimes today across our country, that where have all the righteous people go, gone? Where, where are the people who stand for truth and righteousness and justice? Where are those people? They're there. Sometimes we feel like uh, Obadiah, we have to go and hide people in caves that they can serve the Father, because remember, Elijah thought that he was the only one. But no, the Father says they're there. So he says, Lord, speak here, because falsehood reigns. Lies reigns, half-truths, quarter-truths, fake news. All of those things reign here. Well, what's the attitude there? Well, if, there's, if we cannot have truth, then it is impossible to build strong, lasting relationships because it's like shifting sand. There's nothing rock-solid about it because truth is always rock-solid where lies and half-truths, fake news reign, then all of the things that we experience are not good because everything is based on deceit. Everything is based on a lie. And so we begin to live our lives based on the lie, whereas the Father calls us to live our lives based on His truth, the norms that He has given us. He's given us the scriptures to know how to live and how to follow him, to take care of the widow, the poor, the orphan, to bless people, to pray for people, to walk with people, to serve with people. All of those come from the God of truth. Because remember, our truth is in reality a person. It is God himself. So that's where we live. That's where we stand. So what does the psalmist say? He says, God, they, they, they ignore you. They don't want to be bothered with you. But then God speaks through the psalmist. Here's what the, God, the Father says. Because of the devastation of the afflicted, the groaning of the needy, 
I will set him safely for what he longs for. What do the needy, what do the afflicted, those who are abused by lack of truth, long for? They long for peace. They long for justice. They long for truth. They long for hope. Because if there's no truth, then there's no hope. And so they long for that. And the Father says, I will provide that. Then he gives us this wonderful, wonderful, wonderful illustration. He says, the words of the Lord are pure words. Pure. John helps us here. John says that the Father is light, and in him there's no darkness at all. There's no impurity there. They're pure. They're words that you can rest your life on. They're words that you can enjoy and know. They are pure. There's nothing unrighteous about them. They're solid. They're truth. But then he goes further. As silver tried in a furnace in the earth, refined seven times. Now understand, yes, we, we realize that seven is, of course, you know, the perfect number, but understand the whole idea here. Because God is saying, I'm getting at perfection here. But why silver? Why fire tried? It's simple. One, let's go start with the idea of tried. That the Father's word has been tried and tested time after time after time after time again. Therefore, we know with surety that the Father's word is true. It has been tried. It has been tested. But let's look at the word fired a little more. Because the whole idea here of fired, as it's silver is fired in a furnace seven times, is the whole idea of a smith, a goldsmith, a silversmith, anyone who works with metal, if they want the pure metal, what they're going to do is take the ore and burn it, fire it, melt it. And then they come back and they scrape off all of the dross, all of the dirt, all of the impurities there. And they take it and they take all of that off. Then they do it again. And they do it again. And then they do it again. And when they're satisfied, they're, they're done. But God says, no, that's not enough. He says, I'm going to do this seven times. Because again, seven times gets us to purity. It gets us to perfection. And so as we purify this, we know that it is God's word. Now, what's the silversmith doing? The silversmith is taking off all of this dross. He keeps firing it until he can see his image clearly and plainly in the metal. What God is doing is doing basically the same thing. As he tells Jeremiah, he says, Jeremiah, I'm watching over my word to perform it. Because the Father's word is true. The Father's word is pure. The Father's word is something that we can believe in, stand on. Therefore, we have hope. Therefore, we have peace. Therefore, we have healing in our lives because of what he has said. Because the Father's watching over his word to perform it. The next thing the Father says about his word is this, that my word, when I send it forth, will not return to me without accomplishing its purpose. The purpose of God's word in this context is to encourage our souls, to let us know that, yes, it feels wrong out there, but the Father has spoken and I can rest in and I can walk in the truth and the surety of his word. Yes, it may feel that way, but inside here, I rest in the fact that I have the knowledge and the surety of God's truth in me, for me, to revive me. Verse 7, You, O Lord, will keep them. That's us, the righteous. You will, pervert, you will preserve them from this generation forever. Why? Because that is the Father's truth to us, His Word to us, that we know and walk with Him. Because His Word is true. His Word is pure. His Word brings hope, peace, and healing. Lord Jesus, thank You that You are our truth. And the Lord, we can stand there, Lord, when all, everything feels wrong, we know that we can rely on you and your truth. 
These things, Lord, we pray in your holy, your mighty, and your blessed name, Lord. Amen. Be blessed today, dear friends.